So the thumbnail to this video is a very, um, it's very tragic as well, it's very sad, um, but it's kind of became iconic, uh, of a, obviously, Sagsy doing the jazz hands, and I spoke to the guy who um, took that, so that was taken in November 2004, so he never died for another two and a half years, um, it's hard to, look, to imagine looking at him thinking you could get any worse, but he did, but it was took exactly there and um the guy who took the picture said to me he said sometimes we'd just come down here just to because everyone knew him so we'd fill the the, paper, the wakefield papers only in once once a week um so that thing like, was in every other week but that's where it was took here gav so this was the wakefield magistrates court i interviewed a, a lovely lady called julia i can't remember her name uh, and she said he was like a court majestic he would been here Every other day. So, a little, a little funny story, but when you look at it, it's not funny because it's the state of where it was. Yeah. Sometimes what he'd do, back in the day when you see, when that photograph was taken yeah. in his rags. Yeah. There's about six coats on, didn't he? Yeah. Now, before that, um, I think I mentioned in the books, rough the same time as year now, like this, very cold. Yeah. Clammy and cold. And that's where um, I found Paul. At the side of the Beck in Wakefield mm. in the park, as I'm driving through to get my breakfast in the morning, mm. I just saw this like it looked like. <coughs> I tell you what it looked like. It looked like Guy Fox, mm. a bonfire man that kids have left and thrown it in the mm. side. And when I looked, it was face. It was head down in in the in the water. You said that how we never drowned. I'll never oh, know. I never know because I mean, like it was out in, in his clothes, in the famous blue jacket. Whatever, yeah, they were there. Spark out and. At first, I just thought it was a Guy Fox, for a kid's yeah. after Guy Fox. So when I looked, Paul, oh, it was only weeks before that, that's when I caught him in the um, in the skip, mm. you know, around the back, um, but it's sleep. Yeah. Which where was that, though? That was in Wakefield Park, down side of Wakefield yeah. Park. Because there was a play, uh, Chris Campbell talks about in the book, he says, so Sykes, he's been sleeping behind a nightclub, I forget the name, I just walked past it, yeah. and he said, everyone knew Sykes was in there, and then all of a sudden, people set a light. He, oh, well, that's that I've so you think that was someone trying to kill him? Oh yeah, well the kids yeah. trying to trophy him. Because obviously he, he had lighter fluid poured on him September 2005. He did, and he also met with Park as well. Yeah, so Thorn Park was yeah. it or somewhere, I'll was show it? I'll you that later. <laughs> but here many a time what he do as a laugh, he'd get that drunk. Yeah, even when you're in that such despair, mm. where he, you know, I mean, he were awful. He got scabs on his yeah. face and, and that famous picture. Sometimes what he'd do, He'd go around at night time, just get a drink anywhere. Mm. And sometimes he'd just lay on there and go, that's where I'm going to end up here in the morning. Really? So rather please lock me up because I'll wait here for him yeah. to come and open the doors and arrest me for drunk and disorderly. Take me across to Nick, mm. give me some food, bath me. Mm. He goes, and I'll just wait to get done again. I know, I know, I've spoke to several police officers and that many times they'd say, he'd go in and he'd say, look, I've broke my bail. Just give me a night, send me to Armley. Yeah. I'm not going to be in any trouble because he knew there was, you know, well, he was a target, wasn't he, at the end? What right. very sad was, I know one guy said to me, he said every time I saw him, he was covered in eggshells yeah. where people were using him. Look, end of the day, we all talk about it. Mm. Right? Well, that's what he was a talented man. Yeah. Right? You're going to meet that gentleman this afternoon, right? You're ta another very, very talented man who, who could. The only one who could really cope yeah, with him. Who could like recite poetry and, and do any educated men, and he mm. was an educated man, mm. as you see from the videos. But when he got to that stage, it was sad, mm. and then people just like trying to trophy him, like putting the foot <coughs> of a big dead lion, and you know, hey, I've just killed this. No way would they do that. In the, no way. The, he just breathe out and knock someone out, mm. it, it, and it was sad. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, and you'll see from him being. Like he was, yeah. that awful. Do you know what I remember? So I, I spoke to the chief of West Yorkshire Police. I couldn't believe he spoke to me. Obviously yeah. he did, but I kept his name out of it. Yeah. I think he's 19 pages in yeah. Final Agony, 20 yeah. pages. Yeah. And he said, all the criminals are met, because he was in the army and then he was he had this amazing career. He said, all the people are met. He said, a lot of people will go, do you know who I am? And he'd be like, well, if you have to ask me, you don't know. He said, but with Sykes, everyone knew who he was. The jungle drums. <laughs> yeah. There's no Sykes is out on the and that's what it was. Now, you know, a lot of people, yeah, if you used to fear a lot of people, gain respect by fear, the sheer mm. fact that he's there, mm. buy him a drink, 
and they're like, oh, Paul's with friends. As long as you were buying him a drink, mm. you're with friends. But it's like trying to put a big lump, lump of meat into a lion's den. It'll take it off you. Mm. And with an heartbeat, we know, react, which it will turn and kill you. And that's what he'd do. Mm -hmm. He'd knock you out. That's a great head. analogy. Because he did, and I, I spoke to a couple of people, that what, one of his kind, obviously he had a, he didn't have a lot of patience. He had highly intelligent. A lot of people weren't on his level. So he didn't have a, the greatest patience for fools. Didn't suffer fools gladly. Yeah. And yeah. one of his, yeah. his sinister sense of humours was to make people sing nursery rhymes in pubs and all. Did oh, you ever hear any of that? I've, listen, I've seen him do all sorts of things. Where he Singing Humpty Dumpty and all Humpty that. Humpty Dumpty and everything. <laughs> yeah. And Adult's Bar down the road, which is another place. I don't think many people have mentioned it. That's where Chris Campbell and I had a big uh, to do down there. Mm. And I've seen him where... And again, it's a bit awful, but it, it was so drunk. But it was still intact, it was still like boxing. Yeah. And so they just put somebody's head into it, Artex. <laughs> really? Yeah, that bad. And that clo in fact, closed it down that night, that night. I think you mentioned that in the book, didn't you? I did. I mean, yeah. it, it just literally, some guy was giving it what he could do. He heard it, caught him, and then mm. clocked him like, from here to that wall away, just got up. Put his head into it, like, yeah. So, severely knocked the yeah. guy up. I mean, but, but yeah, but many a time here, you know, he'd be there nine o'clock Monday morning, of course, you know, he wouldn't even get out because I well, tried to open the door from there. I know because I've got a few of my friends worked in here, mm. and we were in here all the time from um, going to court cases yeah. for nights, and we had ding dongs for every people at night, but we couldn't get out because he'd be late there. Yeah, so the drink police or police would check him, give him a bath, give him a food, and he was right then. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So is that Wood Street Nick next yeah, door? Yeah, yeah. So obviously um, Wood Street Nick, I mean it kind of just closed as I think I started writing yeah. the books. Well as we stand there now, under here from, from here to the police station which is here, right. there's all tunnels under here from... from oh the, right, I see, so from, obviously, right. So, from, from, uh, so it's the Bradwells you get and took. obviously here, this other building here, is the Wakefield Crown Court, right. where many a uh, yeah. uh, big case not the piece that we cited, but yeah. other big cases that were national cases get tried here. Yeah. So around here, right now in Wakefield, back in the day, there were a very strong, um, popular... Wakefield's quite big as well, isn't it? It is, yeah, but if you just look here now, that's Wakefield Police Station there. Which one? Right in front of them. All so that's, that's Wood Street, Nick? That's Wood Street. Nick. Right, so, I mean, let me just think. So he was born 1946. Um, I mean, that, when his sister came to my house, she showed me all his... Um, it was pretty impressive his criminal record and uh, exactly, yeah. yeah so he started joyriding in yeah. his teens and yeah. um yeah. but you could imagine i mean that building now looks derelict it is, but, but you could imagine good. how many times he ended up there well let me show you right so all this here that was the main entrance there over there the steps there yeah all right there, but them gates down there these double gates here let yeah. me show you down here So where was the main entrance? Yeah, well, the main entrance there, but I will show you these gates here. But this is where, when they used to unload him out at meat wagon, yeah. into here, and it used to be, they used to line up. Yeah. Uh, who was that really uh, copper who took no shit? He was a Buffalo, a Barnsley Bill or something, was it? Barnacle Bill or something? Died a couple of years back, but he always was arresting him. Yeah, I, I know, you see, there were... Uh, he was a boxer as well. He was yeah, really, right, he was really respected. Yeah, he was very, very. And and he, I think he was a referee or something. And he just, yeah. every, every, um, go for sightseeing and just oh, be yeah, like. I, 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 come to me. In here, this is where everybody, where anybody used to come and get locked up and go left into thing. Yeah. When they knew that Paul went on his, on his way. Yeah. Right. The pull in here. Yes, they get locked. There used to be a police dog man. Normally Roger. Because they set the dogs on him, didn't they, oh, a few times? He'd be there. Yeah. So they'd go through, they lock it, and the belt police get him out, and he'd just either come quietly, but what I will say, when dog handled with you, normally Roger, yeah. he'd be there with his big black dog, Prince, mm. black and wolf. And he'd go, now then, we're either going in quietly, 
or go through it. And you, the many yeah. times there's been many times where he's gone in there and he's gone toe to toe with everybody, until the dog got yeah. in and boom. And then they put him inside, they get locked up, squared off. Through that, you can see through there to hold him to here. Yeah. Um, but many times they come in, lock it up to letting him out. It's like having a big, massive pit bull coming out mm. with all the dog catcher paws. Mm. They knew we were going to, mm. especially through that frame of mind. But what they used to say to him, when you get out, we've got a nice little four, third legged friend coming for you. <laughs> really? Because like like oh. he was attacked by dogs a lot, wasn't he? Well, he was. What? He had a lot you of know, scars on. Obviously, you're... my my dog being one of them. Yeah. Did that to him many a time. Uh, but the time when he um, when he broke into the uh, off license on Doncaster Road, yeah. and they went down and got a pizza, doubled on a kebab, and they went to a graveyard, yeah. which were right across, yeah. and he'd jump in the grave. It'll be in Dublin the after. Have his create a four or five special brews, eat his pizza. And that's the night he got uh, reported. Yeah. And we went and got him, and my mate that got him, and his dog ended up falling down in the grave, mm. fighting him. Then dog handler went in. Dog handler got bit by his own dog. And mm. then said, hey, let's stop this. Let's have a piece of pizza first, and this is it. You can take me in. Mm. Quite comical, but at the time it was serious. Yeah. But many a time, that's where he'd end up here. Dog handlers would wait for him. Mm. Many times he'd get bit. But nine times out of ten, most dog were there, and he realised, especially when it was my friend, who yeah. he really respected him because he'd, do, he'd go off toe to toe with or without the dog. So that's, that's where he used to get caught in there. Do you know, I mean, one of the police, as I said, I, I, I have spoke with a lot. Um, I think it was a beat bobby, and he said to me, he said, I knew him when. We used to have to send half the shift from Wood Street yeah. Nick to get him. So, and he said, I knew him when there was like a gush of wind would have blew him over. There were Jackson and there were, um, his name will come to me, where he took him out just around the corner and Epi's here. Mm. When he, he, he knocked him out and back of here. Really? Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah. Yeah. Is Epi's walking distance? Yeah, yeah. So Epi's was a famous, yeah, famous nightclub, nightclub in Middlesbrough. Uh, no, sorry, Wakefield, sorry. Yeah. Um, so let me tell you about Epi's. Right. So, Alan Hepworth, wasn't he? No, Frank Epworth. Frank Epworth, that was it, yeah. So, <coughs> what it was, with him, Epi's Nightclub, right? I mean, a great place. If, in, I mean, if you couldn't get into Casanova or yeah. Topsword, anywhere, they all used to end up here, Epi's, yeah. and it was like the last chance saloon. Yeah. And all the people... So, was it a nightclub that sold fish and chips? So, Epi's, ah, well, that's the fish supper. That right. was what you had to do then, back in the day, because at last it was, when you went in, you got a ticket, and you had right. to have a, like a burger and a bun, chicken in mm. a basket. Mm -hmm. right. But yeah, but you went front Epi's fish, you had a fish shop. But here, there was a famous Epi's nightclub, and right next to it was the Ratcliffe Club, right. known as the Ratto. <laughs> now, the, the Ratto. I like it already. <laughs> <laughs> the Ratto, whenever you used to go, people used to shut, close, they used to go here in between the closing, yeah. not many times. Yeah. So that's what we got here. Well, this is where that is. So people who've read Sweet Agony, yeah. I mean, I read it twice. It, that's mentioned a lot in the book. Well, it will be. I mean... So whereabouts, where was it? Yeah. And then you had um, local doorman there, right good lad, Bernard Amblin. Yeah, it, yeah I've heard of him. He's mentioned. And all, all the local rugby lads used to go in and come and have a drink. And, yeah. and, uh, but this is where that is, right here. It's not down now. This car park here is here. And where this fence is now, that fenced area there, that's where Epi's was. And the Ratcliffe Club, well, you can see it, Ratcliffe, yeah. uh, the house at the side. That's where anybody wanted out yeah. back in the day. So if somebody nicked a microwave or whatever, mm -hmm. they'd go in here, right? A bit like the Nag Z in Fools and Horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. a microwave, yeah. we'll find it, we'll go in there and find it. And everybody used to go drinking in there in the afternoon till pubs used to open up again. Right. So this bit here, and yeah. this fenced off area here, that's where Epi's was. Yeah. And you'll see this side here, where that car is in there, that's where many a massive scrap yeah. used to happen. And that's, of course, the famous Wakefield Cathedral. And that's the Wakefield. Which is put on, on the original Sweet Agony. Yeah, that's... Yeah. So whenever you were in the Nick, you could hear the town hall clicking, and then you could hear the that clicking. Yeah. So whenever you were in, that's what you used to get. Right. You're going to have to wait for a minute. These yeah. are just coming up here now. Yeah.